Hi, my name is Debbie Mann, and I'm with Festivals and Events Ontario, and welcome to Tuesday Talks with Theo. Our amazing guest today is Carrie King, and Carrie and I, well, Carrie's been in the industry for, well, since I joined 16 years ago, so we've known each other for at least that long through conferences and different things that we have attended and done, so welcome, Carrie, so excited that you're here and sharing your your creativity with us. Thank you, Debbie. It's my pleasure to be here. Great. So listen, why don't you just give us a bit of a background of who you are before we launch into this so that those of you who don't know you have a bit of um, an understanding of who you are and Okay, will do. Thank you. Thanks so much for having me. And uh, yes, as you said, Deb, um, you and I met uh, through the festivals and events industry. And uh, prior to that, um, I started out my career um, as a promoter. And uh, in my 20s, I was in the nightclub and bar business, and I was promoting bands and, uh, and you know, producing punk shows, and uh, so that's <laughs> <laughs> you producing punk shows. Yes, I I produced <laughs> punk shows. <laughs> Are you a and punker? I got metal out. metal shows and rock shows, and then it then it, it it sort of you know went into the jazz era as I got a little bit older. Okay, and uh, then sort of la- <laughs> and launched into the um the I started producing sort of. Um, I worked with the city of Oshawa, actually, and they were looking for for interesting ways to um, bring people into the downtown core and sort of bring some energy and and creativity um, to the downtown. And so we started the Summer in the City concert series. And I was working with the mayor at the time. And I know we have uh, the mayor's wife from Oshawa here, um, which is so cool, Um, our current mayor. But um, part of the work that we did around that was um, we wanted to create a festival. And so after five years of that, we we started the Oshawa Jazz and Blues Festival. And um, so did that for many years and, and then sort of got into um, producing um, concerts, more concerts, larger scale, and then um, trade shows and conferences. Um, and then eventually I, um, I ended up um, getting recruited and working for uh, the region of Durham in economic development tourism. Um, and Kristen Chambers is here from, from and Lori Talling is also here and Eleanor Cook and so many of my friends that, that um, I had the great pleasure of working with in, in that sector. Um, it was wonderful because I got to, um, you know, work as an economic developer as well and, um, and learn a lot. Um, and then my last sort of stint, um, that was a 10 year stint. And the last stint was the CEO of the station gallery, a public art gallery in Whitby. So I've done a lot of things over the years. And, um, I guess the one thing that has been sort of the driving force for me throughout the whole thing was the notion of creativity and how, you know, by tapping into people's creative genius, you can, you can literally change the world. You can, you can make so many wonderful things happen and you can inspire so many people. And, and for me, what I guess I get jazzed about is, is just being able to identify people with talent and celebrate them and put them up on a pedestal and say, look at this. And, you know, I guess in Durham, we've, we've got a lot of talent. And, and um, so it's wonderful to see all the people continuing to join here uh, this morning and um, hoping we can talk about that a little bit. Yeah. Well, I'd love to, I'd like to tap into the whole creativity side of things because, you know, in my, in my world, when I was younger, creativity meant, you know, you were a painter, you were a singer, you were a, uh, a dancer, you were, you know, the arts where, and as I've gotten older, I've come to understand that creativity is, is anything and everything. It could, like, I find this industry, this festival and event industry, they are so friggin' creative. It's true. Oh my God. Like they've got to create something from nothing. I know. And and it's like, you they can have an idea with- and boom, they're, they're off and running. So I, you know, this working here and, and talking to you today um, is just sparking the fact that creativity is not only about um, the arts. It exp- I mean, you could be creative with math, right? I mean, Absolutely. you could be creative with, I don't know, design. So 
I don't know. I just, I'm loving that we're going down this, this road with creativity because I think we're all creative. We just express it in a different way. Absolutely. I think we all have that, that creative side of ourselves and some people don't realize that, that they have it. And um, like, for example, the fact that you're producing these Tuesday talks have come out of the fact that we're dealing with a, a global pandemic. You can't have, you can't run things the same way, but look at how many people are here this morning and we're all connecting and we're going to share so many ideas. We're going to share solutions. We're going to talk about how by being creative. And I think, you know, I think what I admire so much about artists and musicians is that they are able to tap into who they are and, and their purpose and, and what really matters to them and then open up and share that with the world. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what's so exciting about um, when we allow ourselves the, the luxury of being creative and it can happen in so many different ways. And I think now more than ever, we as an industry um, need to think about how we can um, Think about how we can help each other. And, you know, instead of work, going to work every day thinking, well, how can I help myself? But how can I help you? And that's what I'm so excited about, you know, today is being able to work with people in the industry now that like I'm in consulting and, and um, you know, I, I love the, the notion of creativity and how we can solve problems uh, through tapping into our own creativity. And, and I think you actually said that, Deb, in your, in one of your intros, you said um, create uh, the Einstein quote, creativity oh. is intelligence, having fun. Yeah. Yeah. I you like know? that quote. And, and yeah. It's, yeah. I never thought of it that way. Right. Intelligence, having fun. I mean, I don't know, a lot of smart people in the world and we don't give ourselves credit uh, for the, for the, the um, level of creativity we have, because there's, there's always a comparison and I'm, I just really want to, you know, um, and that's why I reached out to you because, you know, I thought, to be honest with you, I thought you were still at the station gallery and I'd heard your podcast and I hadn't realized you were gone. So that even excited me because you were creative in doing that. And I, I listened to one of your podcasts, but like, where can we go from here? So, yeah, exactly. Well, I yeah. think I think that you know I would like to talk a, a little bit about creativity and and just you know and I'm really curious as well as we go through this. I'd love people to um, really engage with us uh, through the chat if possible, and I'd love people to connect um, with us and share their stories um, if they can. And that's what I've been doing with my podcast is is talking to artists and creatives and musicians about, um, you know, how, you know, how they tap into that. And, and for me, the one common thread that I've noticed is that people that are creative are able to tap into really what freedom means to them. So the idea of creativity being freedom, freedom to express yourself, freedom, freedom to be who you are. And, um, and I think that's really exciting. And I think it also has to do with having the confidence to trust yourself, you know? Like think about what you would do if you just allowed yourself to come from a place of, tr of trust and, and, and thinking about what your purpose is and, 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 and doing that. And, and so that, that's just, a, I mean, it's a sort of an esoteric notion that, you know, it's fun to think about. But I mean, today, what I'm hoping we can do is share some tips and ideas on how people in the industry, and I know we have a lot of economic developers here and people in government and from um, all aspects of the industry, we've all been impacted by this pandemic. And um, how you like that, hey, Eleanor, freedom and creativity equals, and confidence equals creativity, yes. Um, well, but, you, you know, know I, I can talk about just one thing. I mean, you know, last year we started Tuesday Talks uh, with Theo yeah. and then, in chatting with a couple of our um, members, like, you know, having conversations with people, um, I was, I just lost you there, Carrie. So I had to, I had to go into gallery view. Okay. Um, you know, I was talking to a couple of our, our members and one was a supplier and one is a, is um, a creative and she's a consultant as well. And um, came up with, 
you know, a different, like adding to our Tuesday talks, right? And uh, instead of it all being about me, which I love, um, it, you know, it's, it, you know, do, let's work with suppliers and have their story. Let's work at reconnecting tourism and let's work with their story. So, you know, Tuesday Talks is, is evolving and, and cre- being creative in uh, new ways it's presenting itself. So, yeah. yeah. And you know what I've noticed is I love the way you, you pre-promote and, you, and you, you now package up and share all the information digitally and we're all able to tap into that. And I know you're also welcoming many people in the industry to have an opportunity to share, share their knowledge. But I know for me, um, I'm in, um, you know, this transition to it, to a brand new business. And I, I mean, I've been a serial entrepreneur my entire life and, you know, I got to hide out in government <laughs> and, and uh, but, uh, different sectors, but I think that's where I actually really, really shine is, is just doing my own thing and being my own boss and and I love that but you know the whole idea that um you know being able to tap into who we are and 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 do that as a business but but also connect with others and um and that's what we're seeing here today um for me I, I wanted to 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 give a shout out to Jennifer Gaskell because she's been pushing me um, the last sort of month or so since I've I've um, started in my new business to get out there and share through a blog and share through my different channels. So today, after I finish this talk, we'll be packaging that up and sharing that as a blog. And I, the reason why I mention that is that just by doing that consistent approach to sharing what I do digitally. Um, my numbers are up like 1800%. And that's something anyone can do um, just by sharing your knowledge and putting yourself out there. And and that's where you talk about this idea of confidence. And sometimes even like there's been weeks where I said, you know what, my friend just passed away. I don't know how I'm going to write a blog this week. And then Jennifer said to me, that's exactly when you need to write the most. And so when you surround yourself with people that support you and people that are creative and that will push you and give you ideas and that you can kind of spar with on creativity, um, that's really important. And so by engaging in Festivals and Events Ontario and and sharing uh, information and supporting one another, it's amazing what can come out of that. And, you know, every single person on this call can have a blog and share and generate generate attention for their business or organization. I heard something recently, um, uh, uh, make your mess your message. Right. (laughs) I hadn't heard that before. So I thought it was cool. So how do you like, do you want people to start? What do you want them to start telling you about creativity? Well, let me just um, walk through a couple slides first. And then I'd like to um, just jump in and and I'd like people to share um, after I walk through these slides. Um, I'd like people to share um, some of the creative approaches that they've taken. Thanks, Jay, for putting that up. So if people need to reach me, um, you can get me at kerryking.ca. And I would like to invite all of you to go on my website and um, join my newsletter, if you don't mind. And that's where I will send you um, notes about uh, different podcasts where um, we can engage because I am looking for guests. Um, My goal is to be podcasting every single week. And again, for anybody, that's something we can all do. So over to the next slide, please, Jay. So yeah, this talk is on leading with creativity. And I think, you know, sometimes you have to almost insert yourself as a leader. And so for me over the years, like when I was in, uh, when I worked with Kristen and Eleanor at the region of Durham, one of the things I set up was we had regular um, uh, talks on Rogers, Rogers Television. And I also provided editorial uh, to the newspaper. Those are two free things that that we did as a way to promote what we were doing. And I think that, um, and it and it really brought a lot of profile to the region and to Durham tourism. And I think that you know we can all look at different creative approaches. And let's talk about that as we go through the first, uh, the next slide, Jay. I just wanted to talk a little bit about um, an event that I am very proud of because. It's um, something I had an opportunity to do in my role in leadership 
um, in economic development. But really, the reason why it was so successful is because people came in from every sort of aspect of our um, community. And initially, I think people thought this was about artists and maybe an art showcase. But what it was, was we brought people together and through events, but also through magazines and online forums. Um, and it was all about connecting creative minds in Durham region. And it's something people still talk about. And I think the reason that it was so successful is that, that people had a place in it. We had, you know, we ended up having Richard Florida come and talk to us about, you know, about creativity and about um, the importance of, you know, tapping into the creative community and um, how diverse it is. It's not only about artists, it's about architects, it's about anybody who makes their living through uh, their own creativity, through their own thinking. Um, and uh, one of the things that I thought um, that was extraordinary about this initiative is it was the first time we started using social media at the region of Durham. And um, we actually worked with um, uh, my one of my mentors is Sue Sutcliffe, who's on the call today. And I was hoping that Sue might be able to jump in at some point because she helped us. Um, she was a pioneer in introducing social media. And at one point, I remember sitting in the CEO's office with the regional chairman, who's no longer with us, Roger Anderson. And they said, what is this that you're doing? I understand like you've got a bunch of social media and we're on Facebook and we're on all these different channels. Um, we don't even have a policy. You can't be doing that. And while well, we said, well, we're already knee deep in it. There's no way, you, there's no way to stop it. This is not going away. And, and that was sort of the introduction to, um, and that's that came out of Art of Transition. So I wondered if um, Sue might be willing to jump in and just share a little bit with us at this point on, um, you know, really how, how we did that from the digital perspective, because that's something we can be doing more and more now. Um, given that we're, we're operating remotely, most of us. Is Sue able to, to, to chime in here? Uh, sure, Carrie, thank you so much for the shout out. And um, I don't think you're alone in that event being uh, a favorite. I think it changed Durham forever. Um, and, and, and I'm still seeing the reverberation of that going out. Um, just absolutely a brilliant team you put together and uh, an amazing project. So that was that was just fabulous. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Like, I think one of the things that we, you know, we partnered with Durham College and next thing we knew is we had, um, we had Apple involved because they had a partnership through the student body. And next thing you knew, we had this whole bank of computers being brought in through Apple. And we had, you know, every, we had, uh, I think we had every, you know, mayor there um, and regional chairman. So it was, um, I think what, what I find exciting about bringing in people from all different sectors, not only, you know, sort of festivals and events sectors or art sector, is that when you have these creative collisions of people, um, so you have artists sitting with engineers, sitting with politicians, that's when true change happens. Because people are able to exchange ideas and, and, and you know, maybe they disagree and that's okay. Uh, because then that's when we can start looking at things from a different perspective. And for me, that's why uh, right now I'm really enjoying doing these podcasts with different creatives because they offer me a different perspective. And I'm curious to know how do they think and how do they see the world? Um, so, Sue, can you share a little more about the, how, what, how you brought digital to it and how that ties into today? Uh, well, it, it just what you're works. seeing today, uh, for, for sure. Um, I think really, um, it was all about what you were saying, really about outreaching to the community and growing on everyone's contributions. I mean, I think that's something that you do exceptionally well, Carrie, um, is connecting Thank people you. and bringing uh, a team together. And I think with everyone's doing the outreach, the, the ripples of the social media just grew. Um, at that point, uh, Kerry um, um, was one of the innovators. So at that point, there was 30, I think it was 30% of municipal governments were online at that point. So that was a, a huge, um, a huge step 
um, of pioneering social media for the government. Everyone was really scared about putting stuff out and um, perhaps the reaction. It was really new back then. Um, and um, I just thought it was brilliant, like you said, that all, everyone came together um, from all, all different areas. And, and interesting, it was a, it was a very short window. Um, this happened when the recession was announced. Um, I think Carrie and I spoke a day or two after what I call the business, the phones just stopped. Um, and, um, the, you know, the region, she talked the region into doing this. And, and basically in six weeks, we had sold out an event when nothing was selling. Um, everything stopped. I think it was 2008. Right. Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. yeah. so, so basically by leveraging everyone's contacts and just reaching out through our own contacts, we were able to, to gather everyone together. And, and, and I think uh, it was an award-winning project, Carrie, your team that you put together that you won a bunch of awards and, uh, and, and actually it was my funnest event ever too. I mean, coming <laughs> in, um, I don't have the stats for the um, amount of people that we grew, but really in a day then that nothing, everything stopped selling in six weeks, this event that was a full day event was a hundred percent sold out. And, yeah, and I think, I think one of the challenges too is, is it had to be about a hundred dollars because we were paying Richard Florida big dollars and, um, and we were able to bring people in. And what Sue did was brought people in on these big screens on social and, and people hadn't seen that before. So I guess, you know, I think the reason why we want to go back to 2008 is, and, you know, just in, in my history is to think about, you know, how we can um, embrace change right now. Um, and I think um, that's how we as leaders, all of us as leaders in our industries that, that, that we work in, um, need to, I think, look at things um, is, is, you know, and I, and, and I think I, I kind of outlined it with five different steps. And the first one is embracing change. The second one is embracing possibility. So what are the possibilities um, how are we going to, you know, how can we take a creative approach to our challenges? Because we all have them. I mean, it's, um, you know, we have to find new ways of operating in this world right now. And so what is creativity? I think, I think Deb, you, you outlined it a little bit there. Um, and, and I think that's cool. And I also found another definition is creativity is defined as the tendency to generate or recognize ideas alternatives or possibilities that may be useful in solving problems. So as Deb said in the very beginning, this isn't all about, about artists and making art and being creative and, you know, something like that. I mean, and one of, one of the deepest conversations I've had recently was with my friend Kristen Chambers, who's on the call. And um, we, we had a very deep, and I won't get into it totally, Kristen, but, um, you know, what would happen if you allowed yourself to be creative, to give yourself that freedom to say, okay, what do I really want to do? How, how can I trust myself enough to put my ideas out? And when you're sitting around a boardroom table and you are thinking, wow, I don't agree with what these guys are saying. I think it should be done this way. And instead of just sitting there with your mouth closed, what if you just decided to open up and realize that you matter? And I think that's why I was able to bring out Art of Transition. I, I, I mean, Richard Florida was a $30,000 speaker. I went to the regional chairman and said, I want to hire this guy. And he said, are you crazy? Like, this guy was a tough dude. I mean, wow. He, and you know what? R Roger Anderson, I love him. He's one of the toughest politicians out there. But he... You know, he's a pussycat inside and I just love him and God rest his, he may rest in peace. He um, really challenged me. And I think that's what we have to do with ourselves is we have to challenge our, ourselves to look at things from another way, another perspective. And that's what we did with Art of Transition. Sue is one of the people that helped us make it happen. And so now when we look at our challenges, how can, how can we look at things differently and how can we create a new vision? And that's one of the things that I've been working on and I'll be launching um, in November is a creative vision quest. And that, that can be applied to anybody personally. 
It can be applied to organizations. It can be applied to municipalities. And we get people, we get about a group of 12 people together and I've been doing it in small little groups. And it's worked um, really, really well in trying to create a new vision or a new sort of way to approach your reality. And, um, and part of it, and, and this is where like my business side comes in is you need to write a plan and take those, those ideas um, and actually put them on paper and dare to dream big, really dare to dream big, not just to survive, but what if you were to look at your challenge and say, this is an opportunity for me to not only survive, but for me to thrive and for me to shine. And whether that means that you get on a stage and become a singer or that you put your ideas out there in a boardroom. And I think that's for me, I had the courage and I had the confidence enough to stand up to, to people and say, no, you know what? My ideas are good. And yes, we should pay Richard Ford Florida $30,000, but let's take another creative way of doing it. We ended up paying him $10,000 and he donated uh, $20,000 back or something like that to um, Durham College. And that's how we ended up doing that deal. We, we got creative and he was really happy because it was great profile. So, you know, the fourth step for me is writing your plan. How, once you write down your ideas, then they become real. For me, I wrote down some ideas that I would transition out of the business I was in into a new business by December. It happened faster than I thought. It happened in a different way than I planned. But I can tell you that it's exactly what I should be doing. So you also have to be careful what you wish for. And the last sort of step in this process is committing to excellence. So every day that you get up thinking about, you know, I'm committed to, you know, whatever it is. And I think right now, a lot of us have different challenges. And that's where I, you know, would love to jump into the group. And I think I had a couple more slides there, Jay. Hey, can I ask, Carrie, you said that your, four, your five are change, possibility, writing a plan, excellence. What's the, I missed one. Okay, so yeah, and I'll write this in a blog post, but it's about the first one's embracing change. We have change. We're not, we can't fight it. This is not going away, Right. Let's imagine the possibilities. What are the possibilities for your festival or event or your city or your team? How can we reimagine it? How can we take a creative approach? And then um, how, how can you create that new vision? So it's create a new vision. So sometimes you have to throw away the old business plan because it's just not working anymore or the old event plan or the old media plan. Maybe it's all got to get thrown in the garbage and we have to start again, right? And if you don't know how to do it, the amazing thing is that there's so many people on this call today, just within this group alone, we can all support each other's challenges. And, and for those of you that are nodding, it's because we're friends and, and we've worked together this way. And I know I don't, I don't have too much more time, but I wanted to give you an example of how when you sort of get inspired by something, um, to really go for it. So this is a picture and um, it's not the best one, but I took this outside of my car window that when I was sitting at a stoplight in Toronto and I was intrigued by the fact that they had taken a parking lot and they put in a bunch of picnic tables, which they had painted multiple colors. And what you can't see is that the walls on either side of the square have been they engaged like dozens and dozens of artists, of mural artists that weren't working. And they painted the pavements, they painted the parking lot itself. Then they painted the, um, the buildings on either sides. And they actually, one of the nightclub owners, it's Liberty Group in Toronto, actually uh, embraced that sidewalk space and created a whole new venue for themselves because they couldn't have everybody indoors. And so I thought that was brilliant. I ended up connect, connecting with the artist, uh, Bruno Smokey, because I thought this artwork is phenomenal. I really need to find this artist. I connected with him through Instagram. He immediately responded back to me. He didn't know who I was. I found out he was doing a mural in Oshawa and I ended up going to see him. And then eventually I engaged him to do um, a public art piece um, painting a shipping container, which um, was a multi-purpose um, unit for, you know, for entertainment, could be a stage. And it also doubled as signage. 
Um, and that only happened because I just saw something that really resonated with me. And I thought, wow, this is cool what they're doing. This is awesome. I want to understand how they did it. I was curious. So I think that's a really interesting way for us to take a look at our challenges. Because for me, I was trying to find new ways of engage, engaging artists and supporting artists. So I guess this is where I want to throw it out to all of you guys. You know, what is your creative genius? Um, and how can you use that to um, solve some of the problems if you were to really trust yourself? Um, and and um, I think I had one more slide there, Jay. Um, how can we also do that through truly being connected? And, you know, I would like to invite all of you um, to uh, connect with me through my website, through kerryking.ca, join my e-newsletter. And I would love to know more about you. I would love to podcast with you. I'd like to, I'm very curious about how, um, how you're approaching uh, the pandemic and your business. Um, but most importantly, I really just wanted to throw it out there to say, you know, how are various people here? Um, what creative solutions are you using to adapt? I know with Sue, she has World Event Center where she has now been working with chambers of commerce and organizations and conferences and events to actually create um, these, these events. So yeah, I guess I'd like to throw it out there to the group. So the one comment I'd like to make too is, I think because we talked about this a little earlier about connection and collaboration, um, and you you said about throwing you know throwing out the throwing out the old idea and trying to come up with new one. One of the things I thought about is like sometimes I keep asking myself the same questions, and I need mm -hmm. somebody to ask me different questions to yeah. spark creativity. So that's why I like the collaboration part as well because it's, it's so important. Yeah, like I don't know about you guys, but when I'm stuck. I reach out to my friends and people I trust around me and say, okay, well, here's what I'm thinking. What do you think? One of the people is Richard Wallace that's on this call right now. <laughs> I'm working on a book right now. And so is he. And, and like, I'll, you know, I'll run ideas by him and he'll, he'll actually read my blog posts and he'll, he'll cheer for me and say, you know what, Carrie, I really like what you said about this. And I really think I'd like to see you do more of this. And that's what we need to do. We need to surround ourselves, not by the people that are tearing us down, because everybody will. The more you shine, mm. the more people want to take you down, right? So just keep your head up. Just keep smiling. Keep moving forward. And, and not and take think, yourself down in the process. Like, don't yeah, not yeah. take the step, because that's a challenge, too. Is well, you can you can totally, you know, freak yourself. Talk yourself your, yeah. <laughs> talk yourself out of it in a heartbeat. Yeah. yeah, but why not? Like, why not live your biggest life? Why not do those crazy dreams? Why not go for, you know, creating the most? I mean, you know, when I was at the region, one of the last events that I helped put together was we wanted to create the largest picnic table in the world. And we did it. We did it. Now, it wasn't me who did the whole thing. I just had the idea and I hired somebody that was an amazing consultant and she put together the team. And next thing you know, we had the world record for the longest picnic table as a part of our Durham Festival. That was, you know, the sort of lead into the Pan Am Games. It was part of the Pan Am Games celebration. And I was on mm. that committee and I wanted to make it big. So, yeah, Kristen's there saying it was such an uh, amazing event, amazing energy from everybody involved. And the reason why it worked, it wasn't about one organization. It was, it was about we had eight municipalities that all came together for one sort of amazing community event. When does that happen? When you get, you know, eight mayors and a regional government, and then you have, you know, Central County's tourism on top of that, supporting it. I mean, that, that was an amazing sort of uh, collaboration. And I think we do need to think about how we can um, support each other that way. And um, Pan Am was incredible, Kyle. Um, I was part of the, the, the committee that, um, that actually did the pitch. And then I was part of the committee that rolled it out. And then I was the lead for Durham region for Pan Am. And I learned a lot. And I also learned that if you push yourself too far, you will, you will crash. And I crashed at the end of that. I crashed hard because you have to know when to sort of let go of things too. So I just I have mean, to say, when you said, 
you know, part of Pan Am, I was thinking, oh my gosh, that sounds like the Hunger Games. <laughs> I <laughs> part of Pan Am. <laughs> so yeah, interesting. You know, uh, the, the world's largest. Mo- what were you saying there, Andrew? I don't know if anyone can jump in, Deb, at this point. And oh and yeah, comment. yeah. Please yeah. unmute yourself. Put your hand up. Just yeah, would love to hear some stories, you. guys. Yeah. yeah. Hey, Andrew. Hi. Yeah, so once I made the world's largest multicultural salad, it was uh, a 200 foot long salad. And uh, the city councillor from Scarborough in Scarborough reached out to my, me and said, hey, you know, somebody wants to do this. Can you help us? And I said, well, what is it? And they said, well, it's the largest salad. I said, well, how big is it? They said, big. And I had to figure <laughs> out what it was, how big it was, how to what to put it in, how to serve it. And we serve uh 15,000 people salad in two and a half hours but wow. the government uh the, the provincial government uh came in and used it as a place to announce changes to the vending food vending rules in uh-huh. in 2007 so it was good a great for event you. good for you because that can be challenging too i know that when we put together events and trying to bring, bring in food trucks and trying to bring in vendors and have being caught up in red tape. I mean, you know, Eleanor's yeah. here, Kristen's here. You guys know about that. Um, how you know it, it seems like when you're an event producer, there's always red tape. There's always okay, you got to fill out these forms and those forms. And I used to just say, "All right, bring it on." There's going to be more forms, you know. And so right. even now, it's like, you know what? We're going through a, 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 this pandemic. Bring it on! Like, how do we? How do we work together? How do we? put ourselves out there and say, you know what, we can get through this and we're not going to get through it alone. We need to get through it together, you know, and that's where it's so important that we, we share our, these ideas, we share these successes we've had. And we engage groups like this make such a difference. Like uh, I'm, I used to be a caterer and um, I belong to a caterers group from the States and it's, it's all over, but like constantly caterers are, are writing in saying, help, can you, you know, I've got this, I've got a dinner for 500 people and I need an idea for a main course or something like that. And yeah. like every, and people commute, create communities and share back and forth. And it's, it's not, it's not a matter of, of one person doing it and, and everybody else not doing it. It's people working together can really make things better for everyone. It's so true. Kyle, I think Kyle, you said you were working on uh, two projects during COVID uh, to use creativity to help people. Are you you willing to elaborate on that a bit, Kyle? Uh, yeah, sure. So, I, I mean, I know FEO is uh, a lot of people on the call will be familiar. So one of the things yeah. I did was I turned my stilt walking characters into physical distancing officers. So I used clowning as a way to help people uh, uh, navigate their own uh, boundaries and alleviate anxiety in returning to public spaces during the pandemic. And the other was I created a juggling mental health video series. So using juggling tutorials to teach mindfulness since was becoming a major, uh, a major issue for 75% of people during the pandemic when normally that's about one in five. So it was just one thing that I could do since early on. I, I, you know, I was sitting around at home and all the events fall away and I just wondered, okay, what skills do I have and what can they do to help people? And I think that's what a lot of people do, and especially festival organizers on the call is, you know, you have all these skill sets and some people may not be aware of, like, these are skills you have that help people on a regular basis and will be really important uh, as we recover and bring festivals and events back. It, It will help a lot of people to heal from the past two years. Yeah, and that's a big thing. It's healing, you know, because, um, you know, there's there's a lot of people suffering. And, and I think that, you know, if you can take every day and think about how can I make a difference? Like, what is there that I can do to help elevate others? And, you know, what I've been doing is, you know, I had a call this morning before this. And like, I'll, t- I'll spend 30 minutes on the phone with anybody and give them a free consultation. But my girlfriend, actually, my yoga teacher, my uh, the woman I took yoga teacher training said, you know what? she's had her business for well over a decade and she said I can't do it anymore I can't pay the rent and she said so I have to go online and so we spent half an hour while I was putting on my makeup and we were talking about ways that she could places venues that she could use and we talked about the Scugog Council for the Arts maybe she can get in there and do her class 
in the morning, maybe, and maybe it can be a win-win and, you know, how can you work with your landlord? So you don't have to pay that, you know, several thousands of dollars a month. And, you know, these things are, are challenging for people. And, and I think it's when you are able to be vulnerable and reach out and say, you know what, I need help. Cause people always think that they have to have all the solutions. I don't have all the solutions. I mess up all the time. And luckily, I, I didn't swear, Patty. <laughs> she's proud of me. <laughs> I saw her face. She's like, don't say it. No, but we all do mess up all the time. And we do need support. And especially when, you know, we're going through these challenges and we're, we're not ourselves. And so like Kyle had, you know, we all need mental health support right now. And we need all need to say, I'm not okay right now. And, you know, how can I get help? So I would say, if anybody has any questions um, for this amazing group of people, why don't you put that in the chat? You know, how, how do I deal with this or how do I deal with that? Um, and, and I think one of the things too, is I know for me um, starting Tuesday talks, it was just having the courage to do it. Yeah. I mean, I am not, I don't interview. That's not where I come from. I don't interview people. I, uh, you know, I talk to people, but you know, I don't, always know what to do. And, and it just, for me, it just felt like our industry needed it. Yeah, and, they do. and, you know, I, and the, the beauty about it too, is I feel this is our second season, as I call it. I feel I'm better now than I was when I first started. I was a little choppy and um, scared and all of that. And I did it anyway. And um, I have to remember that for future <laughs> future ideas and projects, right? Well, so. you know what? We're so lucky to have such great leadership at Festivals Events Ontario, Deb, uh, to you and Dave and Jay and everybody. Um, thank you for everything that you guys do because, yeah, you put yourself out there, but look at, like, now you've given me an opportunity to share my personal art of transition that I'm going through. And it's not easy. There are days, but you know what? It's so exciting that I'm like, I was up this morning and I like fired up to, to talk to you guys. Yeah. Um, Richard's um, got his yep, hand Richard's up. Got hey, something. Rich yep. hey, Richard. Oh, you're on mute. I think. Richard can't hear you. Oh, you're still muted. Nope. You're muted, hon. Can you turn your volume up? I don't know if that's it. And, and what uh, Patty just said was life of transition. Yeah. I mean, for me, I keep changing my careers every five years on average. And um, every time I do that, I learn, I grow, I make mistakes, I fall down, I skim my knees, I get up, you know, you build a couple scars, you get a little tougher. And now I'm willing to step, put myself out there anywhere, like, you know, I'm speaking to groups all over the country now. And it's just because I said, yeah, I'm an, I'm an expert on, on creativity coaching. It's what I do. It's what I've been doing for free for 30 years. <laughs> you know? So now you're, yeah, now get paid for it. Richard, yeah. try again, see if we can hear you. No, can't oh, hear you. Shoot. Maybe you can type your question or your comment into the chat. Um, yeah, be brave. Um, great comment, Sue. Does anybody else have any other stories or, or anything they could share? I really invite you to put yourself out there and, and maybe unmute and jump in because we can all benefit from your learnings and your, your challenges that you may have had. So feel free to jump in. Is there anybody that has any story to share? I, I, I you know, I, I'd love to, to share some of the awesome people and, creative events that um, I've seen in the last two years. Um, I've seen people going online. Um, instead of Zoom, they're building gingerbread houses for a Christmas party or, um, you know, creating a dance event where people can actually listen to music and sit at a table with their friends. Um, I think I've seen a lot of talent transform yes, their business and change and that's been really inspiring to see how people have transformed i mean just just in our in just in ontario alone um various um performers you know that have come together to to um and, and recreated their offering 
to be virtual. And uh, even though everybody clearly wants to be back together again, it, you know, in the meantime, this is a, these are uh, real innovative thinkers like you, Carrie. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's just a couple of things I've seen that have just been brilliant um, and real creating real experiences, despite the fact that we can't be one-to-one, -one, right? So, right. Yeah. Richard, I think we can hear you. I think maybe. I, I think Yay. I Yay! <laughs> so when you're not a technological genius, how do you move forward? That they, I, I'm so thrilled to see you here, Carrie, lighting up the screen like this. And I just want to understand um, it, creativity in business. It's certainly been my brand uh, throughout my career. And like you now, I'm transitioning into another more fully creative place. What I'm curious about is creative creative actions by nature will cast you headlong into a place that many, many people look and go, whoa, that, what, what the hell's going on here? How do you maintain credibility when you're stepping out onto really thin ice, new territory? How do you, how do you, how do you hold those less enlightened people in your following when you're when you're trying something completely new, something that they've never experienced before. Well, I do, I think it for me it's it's having the confidence and trust within myself. I trust myself, but more than like actually in addition to that, I trust my team, and I have a team around me, and I always have them around me. Like Jennifer's on this call, Kristen Chambers is on this call. Sue's on this call, Patty's on this call, Richard's on this call. All these people that I love are on this call. And so if I need anything, I have a massive network where I can sit down with anybody and say, what is your challenge? And they'll say, well, I'm trying to figure out how to get to this. And then I'll say, oh, I know somebody who can help you. And I make that connection. And that's my gift. That's my magic. So but to answer your question more specifically, Richard, is that, yes, I have I have recently thrown myself into the abyss, into the sea of not knowing where I'm going to land. But I trust myself, my team, and I trust my vision because I know where I'm going. And when you have committed to knowing where you're going, you're not just you're not just out in sea floating like I want to get on that wave and I want to surf it. I want to surf that wave. I'm not going to be. Ba bashed around at the shore. I'm not going to let that happen. Um, yeah, it's happened. You get up, you just keep going. You just keep swimming, keep paddling. Because I asked this one guy who's, who's sailing around the world. I said to him, I really want to become a surfer. I'm going to be 55 this year. And he's like, I go, what do I do? Do you have any tips? And he goes, yeah, just paddle out. Just paddle out, get in the game. Just get in the game, just paddle out. And so it doesn't matter, just paddle out, you know, and um, no. And, and then the other thing I think is commit to excellence. No, remind yourself, look back at your career and, and your life and think about, don't think about the times you failed, because I fail all the time. I fail big, I fail hard. And people that know me know that. But it doesn't stop me, because I know I want to make a difference in the world. Every day I get up thinking, what is there that I can do to make a difference? And when you commit to excellence in your life, it doesn't matter what you do. It's always going to work out. Uh, Carrie, um, uh, did somebody put their hand up? Okay. I just wanted to talk. Uh, where is it now? Peter um, said, inspiring talk, big challenge for us at Toronto Garlic Festival to square the creative with the business reality. So, Peter, do you want to talk a little bit about that and get? Sure. Uh, sure. Can you hear me? We, we've yeah. only got 10 minutes. Just let you know. Sure. So, you, and you can okay. hear me? Yep. Okay. Yeah. So Toronto Garlic Festival, um, we started it in 2011. And the idea was to, uh, I was growing a bit of garlic and tasted it and discovered it's really different from imported garlic. And we need to promote our Ontario garlic farmers, give them the opportunity to sell it into the Toronto market, hence the Toronto Garlic Festival. So it's grown hugely over the year years, and we've always made it very inclusive, meaning people from any background or economic background can come, $5 admission, because garlic is used by every culture. So really everyone needs to be there to celebrate 
The challenge though is, is in the business model. So things like a $5 admission fee is great and low vendor fees are great. It makes for this inclusivity, but it's hard to pay the bills. So we've always struggled with how to reconcile the, the, the aspiration part, the dream part with the bill paying part. Part of the challenge too is, I, I think is um, founder syndrome. I may be standing in my own way. That's all I'll say for, for now. Yeah, you know what, Peter, like um, so many things come to mind. I was on the uh, board of directors for um, Culinary Tourism Alliance. And I know that um, Rebecca LaHoop has uh, some amazing ideas. And sometimes we get really, we dig in our heels and we really think, okay, I've got to keep doing what I set out to do. And sometimes we have to know when, when we need to make change. But sometimes, you know, that, that, you know, you can put something on the back burner for a bit and maybe look at how can you, how can you, um, promote your garlic offering in different ways. And, and maybe it's packaging, repackaging the offering. Maybe it's processing it differently. Maybe it's partnering um, with different culinary, maybe it's, it's different with, um, you know, maybe you could partner with Feast On um, operators and have um, garlic bags to go. Like we could spend, like maybe we could get three or four of us that are from completely different sectors um, together following the call. And, and, and it'll spend an hour and just, just brainstorm with you and spar on this because um, we can, uh, Sue's saying she'd love to help brainstorm. I could probably get, I don't know if you know Rebecca from Ontario Culinary, but she's renowned around the Is that Rebecca, Ma McKen Rebecca McKenzie? McKenzie now, yeah. 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 We, McKenzie, are working, yeah we are working yeah. with them to promote an event later in early November. But yeah, right. we know them. Yeah. But you know, sometimes it's it's taking a different approach and looking at what the offerings are. Um, I had the opportunity to go to Ukraine on a trade mission, and we went into areas where um, they had no roads. Like people couldn't get the get there to actually, you know, it was dangerous to get there. You could barely get there on a bus. And so they were growing potatoes. And so they found a ton of different things to do with potatoes that they could, um, how they could offer them and repackage them. And, you know, so it's sort of a necessity um, as they build their infrastructure. Um, so they had to look at it a little bit differently and engage different groups. So sometimes if you can take the problem and, and, and look at it from different, it'd be great to have like four people from completely different worlds to actually look at that challenge. And right. um, I'm, I'm willing, feel free to reach out to me, Peter. I'm willing to help you. And I'm sure Deb would too, to, to yep. put together some a Absolutely. group. Absolutely. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks very much. So Michelle McNally said Art Society King ran our first autumn reflections on plein air last year during the restrictions. We are running our second one right now. In January, we held a winter photo contest and in the spring writing contest, both of which engaged people from all over York region and did not need to be socially gathered and kept the arts alive in King. We're a not-for-profit. So I just wanted to read that out to everybody. That's fantastic. Uh, Patty had something to say. Yeah, just really quick, and I'm in this long line here, but I want to say as an, as an innovator, a creator, if you like, or a professional activator, the reality is we have to build in accountability and ROI that is understood by those we're serving. So before we set out with the dream, really we do, and Carrie and I and the team, uh, Central Counties, uh, Durham Region, we've always said, what is it, how will we know we've arrived? And we're not just the only ones who define that. Our clients define that. How will we know this has been successful? Because we all measure it differently. So why not put that at the front end as part of the equation, as opposed to say, hey, creativity on steroids is not enough. We actually have to make a marginal difference in the uptick of the numbers, in the attendance, in the financial bottom line, whatever that is, because it's different for everyone. Build it into the plan. And that's why we've had success. Yeah, I mean, at right. the end of the day, we're, we're all in the same boat. You know, we're all dealing with challenges of this pandemic. Nobody is unaffected. So, you know, how can we stay connected? And thank you to Debbie and the Festival Events Ontario team for what you do, because this has been hugely valuable to me. One, just because you gave me a platform to share my ideas today and connect with my friends and to meet new friends. 
And so thank you for that. And I, I think that if anybody on this call has something to offer, I would say reach out to Deb and, you know, maybe there's other platforms and opportunities. Um, I'd love it if you guys connected with me and joined my e-newsletter um, through carryking.ca. And I will be sending out some special invitations very, very soon to anybody who joins. Um, I've got some fun stuff happening and I am looking for a test group of people. And so just mention you are festivals and events Ontario um, chat uh, friends and I will um, I, I have um, an upcoming event that I would love to invite you to. Wonderful. Any other any anything else anybody else is a lot of thank yous and and they're loving the talk and so am I. Uh, does too. anybody else have anything? Got five minutes to go. No okay. Well, Carrie, thank you so much for, thank you thank for you. returning my call and, and catching up <laughs> with me. And uh, I'm so glad that we did this. And I, I really feel that um, this was inspiring for our industry and for this chat to kind of, I'm excited now. I just want to, you know, if I could run, I would do that. <laughs> <laughs> we can all go like this. Congratulations, Debbie. <laughs> yeah, thank you guys very, very much. Um, I love to see what you're doing and keep sharing, keep doing what you're doing because we're so lucky to, we're lucky to have you. Nice to see everybody. Thank you, everyone. Yes, uh, really appreciate you. your time. And uh, we'll see you next. Oh, not sure if we have one next week. I'll keep you posted. So um, it is Thanksgiving. It may be a, a, a week a reprieve, but we'll talk about that later. We'll let you know what we're doing in a very short time. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. Thank Carrie, you. thank you for your time. Thanks, Jay, everything. thanks for being our producer thanks, and Dave, thanks, our Jay. supporter. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll see you next week, everyone. Thanks. Bye, Bye. Carrie. Bye.